an interview with Kamala and she goes off the reservation, starts running her mouth when she's all the way done. I'd go, yeah, but nobody asked you about that. Nobody that that is even close. Let's try again. I'm gonna start the same question over again. Kind of got a feeling you're going to give me a six minute answer, but you didn't even come close to answering it. That is Mark Mendenhall. OK, huge fan right here. Why? Gen X talks. I. Uh, I had him on here. He was on with his 18-year-old son, Briggs. I think they have eight kids, <laughs> he and his wife. Um, but the beauty of Gen X Talks, and y- you should check it out yourself. It's viral on TikTok and with good reason. It's a great demonstration. Mendenhall is hilarious. But the way he seeds at how his next generation of kids and the generation after them see things that are so obvious to him, you know, from a generational perspective, is awesome. But you also saw in his podcast... He has a very independent streak to him politically, Um, and I love it, okay? Uh, He's a mechanic, 30 years, obviously an intellectual, big-time parent. Um, I want to bring him in because I want his perspective on where we are and what this race is turning on. Uh, Host of Gen X Talks, Mark Mendenhall. Good to see you, big man. Hey, Chris. It's nice to see you again. So... What do you think this election is going to be about in terms of what makes the what moves the needle towards one side or the other, ultimately, in your estimation? Yeah, that's tough. It just seems like, you know, when you and I were kids growing up, um, politics was the last thing that you introduced yourself as. It was the last thing that anybody wanted to know. You wanted to know where you worked and how Mm -hmm. old you were. You married and kids and stuff like that. Way down the road, you asked about someone's politics and you really didn't care. Now, it's like the first thing they ask if they're going to be friends with you or not. So I kind of think everybody's dug in. Um, You could point out stuff about Kamala that's horrible and people won't care if they're on her side. You could point out stuff about Trump that's horrible and people won't care. I think the decisions right now are in the people that can be swayed one way or the other. And boy, I I don't know. You'd have to touch on a subject that those people care about. You got to find out what they're, those swing voters, the people that can be moved on either side. What are they interested in? Because the big picture is already painted. Everybody kind of knows the broad strokes of what everybody's about. I don't know, Chris. It's a tough one right now. That's for sure. It's because the choices suck. What would you like to see change? What would I like? In, in change in what? what? What do you mean? Our politics. Our system. Oh, yeah. Term limits. <laughs> I think uh, I think a big thing would be fixed with term limits. If you could if you could get people that are career politicians on both sides of the aisle out of there, um, anybody who's been in public service for more than 25 years, I think they're part of the problem. They're no longer part of the solution. Mm. Um, how about duration of campaigns and when you're allowed to, you know, as we both know, a lot of other countries have limits. You know, you can only run commercials for this long. You know, you can only uh, be out there doing those kinds of events, you know, all that all that stuff. I mean, we're in like perma campaign mode now. But what do you think the division really comes down to? Well, it comes down to perspective Um, there. I think it's just the perspective on the candidates. I I think to answer your first question, um, yeah, put some definite rules out there, limited. I think the the more we limit government, the better we are. I think the more we limit campaigning, the better we are. As long as it's even for both sides, who cares? If both sides get Mm -hmm. the same amount of time to campaign, but it's less on us than we win. As, As the American people, we win. But as far as what's, the, uh, what's causing the division, if that's what you're getting at, I think it's perspective. I think people have painted, the media has painted a picture of Kamala. They've painted a picture of Trump. And I think both sides uh, do equal damage to the other side while propping their own person up. So it's right now, it's whoever does a better job of making the, the American people believe them. Because they both can't be right. Both sides can't have the best candidate. And both sides can't say the other one's terrible. That, that there's too many rights and wrongs in there. That they, they can't always be right. So it's who you can convince. I think that's it. It's public opinion. That's it right now. I think you're spot on. Um, let's do this. I'll check back with you right after the election. And we'll see what happened and what we know about why it happened. And then we'll start talking about how we get to a better place. Because i got to tell you, it takes a lot to surprise me. We're doing this J.D. Vance Town Hall in Detroit on Thursday. I love town halls. It's not a great venue for me, right, because it's not an interview. You know, it's not like a debate or anything. But 
it's great for people to be able to right. ask questions and watch candidates deal with real people on their own terms. Um, I can't tell you how many people told me that I'm a traitor for giving him the opportunity. That's where we are now. That's where we are. Anyway, I got to jump. I hear that. Big man, I got to jump. Chris, I hear that yeah? all the time about you, too, and I'm on your side on that one. I am. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I hear tons of bad stuff about me. That one just doesn't make sense. All right, I got to jump. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks, big man. Gen X Talks. <laughs>